violently combusts, acutely toxic. <laughs> oh man, at some point, you're going to want to try to put plastic under that laser head, just like me. But please watch this video first, today on LaserNug. Welcome back to my little garage. If you're a new laser owner as I am, you're constantly trying new materials, trying to learn new things, whether it's in light burn software or what types of creative things you can do with this laser that you purchased. And that includes, you know, different types of woods, plywoods, MDF, acrylics, uh, powder coated items, all kinds of stuff. And sooner or later, a customer or a potential customer is going to call and say, hey, I've got this item. I was wondering if you could do 50 of them and, you know, engrave my logo on them. It's made of plastic. Well, so you've already checked and you know that the CO2 laser can engrave plastic. So why not take the job? This might be why. Many of you folks know that I have another YouTube channel called GP Outdoors. I'm outdoors. And in addition to that, I have an online sales website where I sell a number of different outdoors products, many of which are plastic. So one of the benefits or the ideas I had owning this laser was to personalize or engrave some of these plastic products before they go out the door. But luckily I checked and I found out not all plastics are created equal. This is plastic, this is plastic, 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 plastic. I could go through the whole house. My point being is there's a lot of plastics and a lot of different products that are plastic, but not all of them are safe to engrave. So here's what I've learned that I hope will be helpful to you before you stick a piece of plastic inside your laser. The term plastic is a very generic term. There are at least hundreds, if not thousands of types of plastic that are used to make products that we use every day. The term plastics is kind of like saying the term car. I've got a car, but there are hundreds, if not thousands of variations of types of cars or different features or properties of cars. Is it four wheel drive? Is it two wheel drive? Does it seat seven people, five people? Is it a truck? Is it an SUV? Is it a minivan? Is it a luxury car or a sports car? Is it an electric car or is it a gas combustion car? The same thing applies to plastics and a lot of plastics are incredibly dangerous to put under a CO2 laser. There are some types of plastic that are safe for a laser and there's a lot more that are not. And that's because there are additives or other chemicals added to that plastic for a specific purpose that can create toxic fumes or toxic dust. As an example, violently combustible on a safety data sheet for one of those products. Acute toxicity, same thing. I got it off a safety data sheet and that's why safety data sheets are super critical. If you think about it, I have a supplier that supplies a number of different products to, you know, more or less the craft industry. And they have products that are good for CNC routers. And they have a separate catalog specific for laserable goods or materials. That way we know when I go to buy or purchase product from them to create, I know I go into that catalog only because they've confirmed that all of those materials are safe for me to put into my CO2 laser. Do you remember Romark? We played with Romark for quite some time. I love using it. It's a great sign. Romark has some products that are good for CNC routers. But you remember I mentioned to you that I found their new Laser Max line? They look identical to the other products, but the makeup or the chemical makeup or the plastic or acrylic makeup of these Laser Max products is different. It's safe for lasers, which is why when you order Romark for that laser, you buy their Laser Max product line, not their regular product line. So I wanted to share this specific example and explain to you the steps I had to go through to determine whether or not I could put this piece of plastic into this laser. This is a product I sell. It's actually manufactured in the States. It's made of polypropylene. It's a hard plastic. It's also UV resistant. The first thing I did it is I asked them to provide me the information on what type of plastic this was. So the wholesaler went back to the actual manufacturer who injection molds this product and asked them exactly what type it was. They told me it was a UV enhanced polypropylene plastic. I jumped on the internet, 
And I promise you I could find just as many articles or reference materials that told me it was safe to put this in a CO2 laser. And I could have found just as many that told me it was not safe to put it in. What I eventually worked my way down to is that plastics are not the same. And what I needed was the safety data sheet for this product. So I found out from the manufacturer of this product who they're buying their plastic from and what type of plastic it was. They provided me a tech sheet. I took a look at the tech sheet. There was a big long, I believe it's the UL number, which stands for Underwriters Laboratory. It's a big long number. I was able to trace it back to the actual manufacturer of the plastic itself that he uses to injection mold this product. Went onto their website, pulled it up, was able to find the safety data sheet to find out what was in this plastic and whether or not there were health hazards associated to it. Fortunately for me, there weren't. But what I also found out is that there's a number of different products that actually have additives that create toxic fumes when heated. This one doesn't, so I was safe to put it in and engrave it. One of the benefits of doing all that research into plastics in general doesn't mean I'm a chemical engineer or I'm an expert, because I by no means am. These are just my opinions I'm providing you. But I was actually quite shocked looking through a number of different plastics data sheets over the last several weeks and how many of those plastics are in fact toxic or actually combust under high heat. So one thing I did learn on the PPE sheet is that you need to wear a mask if you're going to be engraving plastics, just in case. So I have my basic mask that I can pick up at any hardware store. This is what I use when I'm sanding drywall or I'm doing any woodwork. It's not this one. You need a respirator, if for nothing else, in my opinion, just for safety's sake. I'm not suggesting you buy this exact one. Again, I'm not an expert, but you're going to find at the big box stores or at your home building centers, there are going to be five, six, seven different types of respirators. And the one for drywall dust or different types of dust is not the one. You're going to need one that's going to block highly toxic fumes and dust, among other things. I found one, reasonably priced. At the end of the day, I recommend that if you're going to do any type of plastics, you need to find the safety data sheet and confirm that that plastic is safe to be put under a CO2 laser. Because although you're going to find a whole bunch of references on the internet that tell you it's totally safe to put polypropylene into that CO2 laser, you don't know what chemicals or additives have been put into this particular type of polypropylene used in this particular product. And in fact, in my case, there are additives to provide more or a higher level of UV resistance on this polypropylene, but there are also a number of safety data sheets or different products, plastic products made by the manufacturer that in fact use additives or chemicals that do create toxic fumes when they're heated or they're burned. In other words, don't rely on what you read on the internet. Try to get the safety data sheet on the particular plastic that that product is made of before you put it under the laser. So let me tell you what it was like engraving plastic. You're going to find that plastic engraves very differently than a lot of the other materials or in fact any of them that we've done so far on this channel. Plastic melts easily. So some suggestions I might offer to you in dealing with plastic. Because it has such a low melting point, you want to start off with a very high speed. The high speed will ensure or help to minimize how long that laser sits in the exact same spot on the plastic in any given second or any given time period. You don't want the laser to sit over that plastic for long periods. The second thing is you need to start off with super low settings. So for example, when I began my testing several days ago, I started off at 700 millimeters per second and I started at 5% power, 400 LPI. As I crept my way up to about 20, I got virtually no melting at all, but a very clean engrave around the letters. As soon as I went over, I think about 23% power, I started to see melting. And the higher I went, I got more melting. Once I got to about 30%, there was just far too much melting on this polypropylene. It just, it messed up the letters, the clarity was gone, and the effect left afterwards, kind of a rippled, melted effect. 
So I backed it off. I also realized that in trying to get a reasonably deep engrave, I needed to make more than one pass. So I ended up right now at 700 millimeters per second, 20% power, and five passes at 400 LPI. That allows the laser to come over each time at a lower power level, which minimizes any melting, maintains the structure of the design, or the letters in this case that I was testing with, without melting the edges. And at the end of the day, after five passes, it's a little bit deeper down, but there's virtually no melting involved, at least on this particular polypropylene product. Although I have a very high level of confidence in the performance of the exhaust system on this bolt, it's a big piece, which means in order to engrave it, I have to open the front door. And although the safety data sheet on this particular polypropylene blend appears to have very minimal potential side effects or hazards, I'm still going to open the garage door and I'm going to wear my respirator. A couple of things I noticed about this particular polypropylene is it does not smoke when it's heated. Although I have read other data sheets and I've seen other articles where different types of plastics will create smoke when you're heated with a laser. The other thing about polypropylene or plastic products is unlike Romark or any other type of thing you engrave, the plastic is one color all the way through. So when you engrave a design or any type of letters or anything on the plastic, the engrave itself unpainted is difficult to see because there's no discoloration. For example, if you're doing wood products or slate coasters or powder coated cylinders or tumblers, you engrave a coating off and there's a different color underneath. When you're doing plastics, the plastic is the same color throughout, which means when you finish the engrave, if it's orange on top, the whole engrave is orange, which means there isn't a pronounced visual effect from the engrave. So let's see what she looks like. So this was 700 millimeters, 20 seconds, 400 LPI, and five passes. Down here at the bottom, you'll see it says made in USA. I'm just gonna slowly tilt this under the light because I'm not sure when you're gonna see it in the camera. That was done through the injection molding process that's not lasered. So up here, what you should see is the words dull sharp in capital letters. That's the part that I engraved. And I'm just gonna turn this to see if we can catch a bit of a view of it. And if you are able to, I'll zoom in. You'll see that the letters are still very, very clean and crisp. There is a tiny, tiny bit of melting in the inside of the letters, but it's very consistent and there's not much, so they all look the same. But as I mentioned to you, no dust, no fumes, just melting, or at least no visible dust and no visible fumes. But like many plastics, there's no discoloration inside the engrave. So the top of the piece is the exact same color as the engrave, which makes it difficult to see. Because the engrave is the same color, I'm trying to work now on trying to find a paint or a means by which to color those letters in permanently. I'm having a bit of a tough time trying to find the right type of paint to stick to plastic because the two I've tried so far say they do stick to plastic, or you can paint plastic with them, but both of them come off pretty easily. The other challenge I'm facing currently as well is in order to paint those letters, I need to mask them somehow. And this paper mask does not cleanly burn off under the engrave. I think it's because the power level is so low that what happens is it does in fact burn the paper, but it leaves all the glue. So the glue gets mixed in to the engraved letters and it's very sticky afterwards. So a couple of challenges, and if you folks have any ideas or if you've had any experience with this, I'd greatly appreciate it in the comments. So hey, I'll wrap that up here. At the end of the day, my friends, please be careful when you're working with plastics. Make sure you look at the safety data sheet or you're getting it from a supplier who has confirmed that it's a laserable plastic and does not emit toxic or harmful chemicals or, or fumes. And if you have tried plastics or you are working with plastics and you've got any great ideas or suggestions or tips, I'd love to hear about them in the comments. Thanks for sticking around with me today. Have a great week with your families. Please be kind to one another. 
and I'll see you again right here. I'm Gord Potter, and you've been watching LaserNug. Cheers. <laughs>